Homotity is a transformation just like zooming in or zooming out on a map. First, we choose one special point called the center of homotity, which stays fixed after the zooming. In this case, we're choosing the center of homotity to be this point. Next, we need to choose a number k, which is going to be the coefficient of homotity. Or in other words, by how much does each segment on the picture scale after the homotity. This is the coefficient of scaling. I'm going to choose my k to be approximately 1.5 which means that after I do the homotity, each segment on the picture is going to become 1.5 times its original length. Now let's see what this homotity looks like. Now we see that the image under the homotity of this side A is this side which has length k times A, and the image under the homotity of this side B is this side k times B, and the image under the homotity of this side C is this k times C. Essentially, this is exactly the same as what we did on the map in the previous video, where we talked about scaling. Now if we label this point A, this point B, and this point C, it means that the center of homotity is C, and under the homotity point A goes to point A prime, and point B goes to point B prime. Similarly to zooming on a map, we know that the original point A, the image of that point A prime, and the fixed point C lie on a straight line. Similarly, b, b prime, and c lie on a straight line. Also, homotity preserves angles. In this case, we have that this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. Essentially, we're saying that this triangle is similar to this triangle. To recap, in a homotity, the center of the homotity remains fixed, all distances scale by a factor of k, and all angles are preserved. A consequence of that last property is that all lines get transformed into parallel lines. For example, in this case, AB got transformed into A prime B prime, and AB is parallel to A prime B prime because, for example, this angle equals this angle. Now, in this case, I chose k to be approximately 1.5, and so if this length is A, then this length is approximately 1.5 times A, and so this length is approximately half of a, so that 1a plus 1 half a becomes 1.5 times a. Now let's see what happens if we choose a different value for k, for example 1 half. Then the transformation would look something like this. The lengths of the transformed triangle are again k times a, k times b, and k times c. In this case k is 0 0.5, and so essentially this length is half of a, so this is the midpoint of this side, and analogously this is the midpoint of this side and also this is half the length of that. Let's see what happens if k equals 1. In this case, essentially nothing changes. In other words, all points are fixed. All distances remain the same. Now let's track where the point b goes for different values of k. So for k equals 1, the point b stays here. For k equals 1.5, it goes somewhere here. For k equals 0 0.5, it goes here. For k equals 0 0.25, then it's maybe somewhere around here. Thus, for k equals 0, it makes sense to assume that point b goes here, and also every other point collapses here at the center of the homotity. This is why when defining a homotity, we assume that k is not equal to 0. But what happens for negative values of k? For example, for k equals negative 1, let's see what happens. When k is 1, b is here. When k is 0, b is here. And so, when k is negative 1, it makes sense that b goes right here. This is what happens when k equals negative 1. The point b goes here to b prime, the point a goes here to a prime, such that this length equals this length equals a, and this length equals this length equals b, and also this length equals this length equals c. Essentially, we took every point and reflected it with respect to the center of homotity. And if k was, let's say, negative 1.5, then this is how the commodity would look like. The point B would go to B prime, A would go to A prime, and this length would be 1.5 times this length, and this length would be 1.5 times this length. Contrast this with the case when K was positive 1.5, when B prime was here, and then we measured this distance is 1.5 times this distance. Similarly to positive case, for negative case we again have that the line AB transforms into a line that's parallel to itself, because this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. Essentially, this triangle is similar to this triangle. 
so homotopy preserves angles even if the coefficient is negative. Now let's see an example of what happens if we use homotopy to transform a circle. We have a center of the homotopy here, and we have that the coefficient, for example, is 2. Then, where does this circle go? Well, the transformation looks like this. Here, every point on this circle moved to a point on this circle. And it has the property that Ca times the coefficient k, in this case 2, equals Ca prime. Or in other words, if a goes to a prime under the homotopy, then a is the midpoint of C a prime. And since homotopy preserves the shapes of the objects, it means that the image of this circle is another circle. And it means that the image of the center of this circle is the center of this circle. And so this center, this center, and the center of homotopy lie on a straight line. And because all distances got scaled by a factor of k, it means that if this radius is r and this radius is r prime, then r prime equals r times k. This means that the radius of the new circle got increased by a factor of k, as well as any other distance on the picture. In this case, since k equals 2, it means that this equals this, and that this equals twice this. Here's how the picture looks like if the original circle passes through the center of homotopy. Then the transformed circle also passes through the center of homotopy because the center of homotopy stays fixed. And if we draw a line like this, then a goes to a prime under the homotopy. And so if the coefficient is k and this length is x, it follows that this length is k times x. Here again, the center of the small circle O and the center of the large circle O prime lie on a straight line with c. And we have that the distance co times k equals co prime. This is the intercept theorem. Suppose that we're given triangle ABC with side lengths A, B, and C, and suppose that there is a line A1, B1, such that B1 lies on this line BC, and A1 lies on this line AC. Then the intercept theorem tells us that if AB is parallel to A1, B1, then the proportion CB1 over CA1 equals the proportion CB over CA. Or in other words, the ratio of the sides of this triangle equals the ratio of the sides of this triangle. This means that the two triangles are similar. You can immediately see how homotopy can help in this problem. We can define a homotopy centered at C, such that A goes to A1 and B goes to B1. Then, we know that homotopy preserves parallel lines, and so AB is indeed parallel to A1B1. What's more, we know that A1C is K times B, and B1C is k times a, because all segments got scaled by some factor k. And so the ratio cb1 over ca1 is going to be ka over kb, or a over b, which is exactly the same ratio here, a over b. The intercept theorem can work in both directions. If this over this equals this over this, then this line is parallel to this line. This also follows from homotopy, because we can take a homotopy centered at c with coefficient minus k, and therefore, since this is b and this is k times b, a goes to a1, and since this is a and this is k times a, b goes to b1, and so ab goes under the homotopy to a1b1, and because homotopy preserves parallel lines, it follows that ab is parallel to a1b1. The intercept theorem also states that if ab is parallel to a1b1, then this length a1b1 is k times this length ab, this is apparent from the homotopy we constructed, because the coefficient of homotopy is negative k, and so if the original length was c, then the transformed length is k times c. The intercept theorem also works when the points a1 and b1 are on the other side of the rays. In this case, I've taken points a2 and b2, such that c a and a2 and c b and b2 are in this order on their respective lines, then it follows that if a b is parallel to a2 b2, then the ratio CB2 over CA2 equals the ratio CB over CA. Or in other words, if this length is B, then this length is M times B, where M is some constant. And if this is A, then this length is M times A, where M is some constant. Now, a commodity centered at C with coefficient M takes this point here and sends point B here, which means that AB is parallel to A2B2 and that all distances got scaled by a factor of M. And so if this length is b, then this length is mb, and if this length is a, then this length is ma, from which the intercept theorem follows. And the reverse is also true. 
if we apply commodity with coefficient m, then a goes to a2, b goes to b2, because of these distances here, and it follows that ab is parallel to a2, b2. And similarly to before, we conclude that if this length is c, then this length here is m times c. Here's the optional problem. We have four squares arranged like this in a row, and the four squares have side lengths 1. We draw this line starting from here, passing through this point, and it intersects this line right here. This length is x, and we need to find what x is. And here's the solution. We know that this length here is 3, and this length here is 1, this length is 1, this length is x, and this is 90 degrees, which equals this 90 degrees. We know that this line is parallel to this line, and so we can apply the intercept theorem for this line, this line, and this line being parallel to this line. The intercept theorem tells us that the ratios of the sides of this triangle equal the ratios of the sides of this triangle. And since this over this is 1 over 3, then we can conclude that the ratio between this side and this side is going to be 1 to 3. And so x over 1 equals 1 over 3, or x equals 1 third.